Hi, this is the second video for quadratic sequences. Uh, please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions, download the worksheet. If you're not sure about anything, please do add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, this is the second video in the series where we're looking at quadratic sequences. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions. We completed last week, or last time, to question number seven. We're going to start here from question number eight. We're going to use exactly the same principle that we've used before in all the other questions, in that the first thing is we're going to write out the uh, first line difference and then the second line difference. So the first line difference on this will be in this particular case 10 and then I've got 14 and then I've got 18 and the second line is going to be in this particular case positive 4. Now that positive 4 is equivalent to 2a and then 10 is equivalent to 3a plus b and then minus 8 is a plus b plus c equals minus 8. Because remember that what we're trying to do is find the nth term, and we're trying to write a quadratic sequence of the form a n squared plus b n plus c. If you're not sure about any of this, please do refer to the previous video. That might help a little bit. OK, so we know that 2a equals 4, so therefore I'm going to say that a equals 2, and I've got my first term, 2n squared. The second term is going to be b, so I'm going to use 3a plus b equals 10, and I know my value of a already, so it's 3 times 2 plus b equals 10, so therefore b must equal 4, so that's going to give me plus 4n. And then finally c is going to be by using a plus b plus c equals minus 8. Okay, well a I know is going to be 2, b is going to be 4, c equals then minus 8. OK, so if I calculate that, I've got 6 plus c equals minus 8. Take away 6 from both sides, I get c equals minus 14. So my final part of this equation is c is minus 14. So I've shown, therefore, that the nth term is going to be 2n squared plus 4n minus 14. And then it says, hence, find the term that has the value of 112. Well, basically, all we're doing is using this nth term, making it equivalent to 112, and then looking for the actual value of n. So what I mean by that is I've got 2n squared plus 4n minus 14 equals 112, then really what I need to do is solve it. Well, the easiest way to do that first is to divide through by 2. So I'm going to get n squared plus 2n minus 7 equals 56. OK, I need to make that equal to 0, so I might, I'll might i write this as n squared plus 2n. I've got minus 7, then minus 56 is going to give me minus 63 equals 0. And then really it's just a case of factorising. Well, I know two numbers that multiply together to make 63 and add to make positive 2 are going to be positive 9 and minus 7. So therefore I can write that as n plus 9 multiplied by n minus 7 equals 0. So therefore, I've got n equals minus 9 or n equals 7. And it's the n equals 7 that I'm interested in because therefore it's a positive 7. So we're saying that the value, the term that has the value of 112 is going to be the 7th term. OK, I hope that's OK for you. If you're not sure about anything, uh, please do add a comment and I'll try to give you some other uh, playlists or videos to have a look at. As I mentioned, this is the second part of this particular worksheet. OK, so let's have a look then at uh, number nine. And again, we're going to use exactly the same idea. Calculate the formula for the nth term of the following sequence. Well, I'm going to start with minus two to minus one is going to be a difference of one and then a difference of two and a difference of three. So therefore, my second line difference is going to be one in its particular case. And that's going to be equal to 2a. 3a plus b is going to equal to 1, and then a plus b plus c is going to equal minus 2. OK, so again, I can use this information because I'm looking to achieve an squared 
plus bn plus c. I know my value of a now because 2a equals 1, so therefore a must equal a half. I'm going to write these as uh, decimals, 0.5n squared, but I could, if I wanted to, write it as a half n squared. Okay, so if I want to find now the value of uh, b, I've got 3a plus b equals 1. Well, I know that a is going to be 0.5 plus b equals 1. So 3 lots of 0 0.5 is 1.5 plus b equals 1, minus 1 1.5 from both sides, and I get b equals minus 0 0.5. So I've got minus 0 0.5 n, and then finally my value of c, well that's going to be a plus b plus c is going to be equal to minus 2. Okay, so a is 0 0.5, OK, and B is going to equal minus 0 0.5. So those two are going to cancel themselves out. OK, equals minus 2. So therefore, in this particular case, C must equal minus 2. So that's minus 2. OK, so in actual fact, the nth term for the sequence is going to be so that's going to give me uh, the nth term is going to be 0.5 n squared minus 0.5 n minus 2. Or if I prefer, I could write that as a half n squared minus a half n minus 2. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, uh, part B of this is calculate then the tenth term in the sequence. Well, let's just um, write that in. So I'm going to use 0.5 and I'm going to write 10, where n would be squared minus 0 0.5 times again 10 minus 2. OK, so this would be 10 squared. Remember, bid mass, you've got to say 10, it's use the power first. So a half of 100 is going to be 50. And that's minus a half of 10, which is going to be 5, minus 2, and that's going to give us 43, which would be the 10th term in the sequence. OK, let's move on then to question number 10 on this particular worksheet. So again, we're going to use exactly the same idea. OK, we're going to work out the nth term. So therefore, the um, first line difference is going to be, in this case, minus 4, followed by minus 6, followed by minus 8. OK, therefore, the second line difference is going to be minus 2 each time. Now, that minus 2 is equivalent to 2a. 3a plus b is going to be equal to minus 4, and a plus b plus c is going to be equal to 19. OK, so bearing in mind, I need it in the form a n squared plus b n plus c. I know my value of a now is going to be minus 1, because 2a equals minus 2, so minus 1 n squared. Now, practically, we would write that as minus n squared, but I'm going to leave it as minus 1 for the moment. OK, I need to find b, so 3a plus b equals minus 4. Uh, so that's going to be 3 times minus 1 plus b equals minus 4, so that's going to be minus 3 plus b equals 4. If I add 3 to both sides, I get b equals minus 1. So therefore, it's minus 1n. And then finally, a plus b plus c equals 19. So slightly bigger numbers to be dealing with, but that's OK. So that's going to be a is minus 1, b is minus 1, plus c equals 19. So that's going to be minus 2 plus c equals 19, therefore c must equal 21, so plus 21. Now, practically, I don't tend to write minus 1n squared, as I mentioned before. I just write that as n squared minus n plus 21, and that would be the answer to uh, part a. OK, so part b is going to be calculating the tenth term in the sequence. Well, that's OK for me. All I'm going to do is substitute. I've got n squared minus n plus 21. The tenth term is going to be 10 squared minus 10 plus 21, so that's going to be 100 minus 10 plus 21 is going to give us a value then of minus 89. And that would be the answer to part B. OK, so let's move on then to the final two questions on this particular worksheet. I've got the first one, which is one of those um, oddball questions that you 
tend to get from time to time. The nth term of a sequence is that, two consecutive, and the important thing here is this word consecutive. So in other words, it could be the 10th and the 11th, or it could be the 1st and the 2nd, or uh, I don't know, the 4th and the 5th, something like that. Consecutive terms have a difference of 13. Now, I'm just going to use a little bit of instinct here, and I'm going to firstly work out the 4th term. Okay, the value of the 4th term is going to be 4 squared plus 2 times 4 plus 1, and when I work all that out, I'm going to get 25. Okay, let's look at the 5th term. Now, it is a three-mark question, so just in the interests of uh, the video, I've kind of cut out a little bit at, uh, at the beginning where I kind of started from one if I needed to. Okay, but in this particular case, I happen to know that actually it's the fifth and the sixth because the value of the sixth term is going to be a value of 49. And what we've got is 49 minus 36 is actually 13, so therefore the two terms are 5th and 6th. Okay, and that would be the answer to that particular question. Okay, so a bit of an oddball question, but well worth it for those three marks that you're going to get. All right, let's have a look then at the final question, which I do see a fair bit of these um, coming up in uh, GCSE questions, some patterns made with square tiles, but pretty much it's the same idea. What we're actually saying is that we've got to write the nth term uh, for this particular uh, sequence, because the sequence we've got is going to be 3, and then we've got 6 tiles, and then we've got 11 tiles, and then we've got 18 tiles. If you total all those up, you'll, you'll be able to count them off. Okay, so um, the first line difference is going to be 3, then 5, and then 7, which is going to basically mean that uh, the second line difference is going to be 2 and 2. So 2a equals 2. 3a plus b equals 3, and a plus b plus c equals 3 itself. Now, bearing in mind, again, I'm looking for the nth term, so a n squared plus b n plus c. Well, I know my value of a is going to be 1, so that's going to be 1 n squared. Okay, then I've got 3a plus b equals 3, so 3a plus b equals 3. And the first part of it, I know a is 1 plus b equals 3, so b in this particular case equals 0, so plus 0n, which I'm just going to write in just because it makes, I makes, it makes my calculations a little bit easier to follow if I make a bit of an error. Okay, finally, a plus b plus c is going to equal to 3. My value of a is 1, my value of b is 0, c equals 3, therefore c in this particular case must equal 2 plus 2. So therefore, the nth term for this particular sequence is going to be n squared. Normally, we don't write 1 n squared. We just write as n squared plus, don't bother with 0 n, just plus 2. Okay, so finally, if I go back to the actual question itself, if it says, Joe says that one pattern in the sequence is made from exactly 80 tiles, is Joe correct? Give a reason for your answer. Well, actually, all we're basically saying is that n squared plus 2, which is the nth term, must equal 80. So let's have a look at this. In order for 80 to be a number or a pattern within the sequence of tiles. So n squared plus 2 equals 80. So n squared equals 2 both sides is going to be 78. So the answer is no. And that's because 78 is not a square number. In other words, I can square n squared, but I can't square 78. Okay, it's not a square number. And the value of n is not an integer. Okay, so if it was an integer, it would actually have a whole value. In other words, therefore, it would be somewhere within the sequence. Okay, so I hope that's been useful for you. Please do add a comment below. If you're not sure about anything, I'll always come back to you. I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video. Okay, so I hope that video has been useful. Please do add a comment. If you're not sure about anything, I'll always come back to you. I'll look forward to seeing you inside the
the next video.